muscles, your transversus abdominis muscles, and your pelvic floor muscles, um, and give you a little bit of some strengthening um, to do in your pregnancy. So what you need is you just need a floor space. You can use a yoga mat or just your carpet and um, a towel just to kind of protect your knees. And we're going to start on your hands and knees. So coming on to your hands and knees and putting your towel on your shin bones so that your knees are just a little ahead of it to protect your knees and you're going to start by finding tables so that space right in the middle of cat and cow and let's just take a few of those movements as you exhale rounding your back and tucking your tailbone releasing your head and finding that cat stretch and on your inhale Lifting the head and lifting the tailbone, bringing the shoulder blades together, finding cow pose. Here your shoulders are nice and glided away from your ears. And your heart is open. And on your next exhalation, you're going to round your back into cat. And inhaling into cow. And kind of moving through those directions, moving in a range that feels good in your spine. Here you feel like you're giving your baby a hug. And here you feel like you're opening your heart. Breathing in to cow. Breathing out to cat. Breathing in to cow, opening the heart, and breathing out to cat. And then coming back to the middle. So table is that space right in between, finding some length in the back of your neck so that you're not jutting your chin forward. And let's begin to find our transversus abdominis muscle. That is the deepest layer of our core, and that muscle wraps this way around the spine. So I'm gonna have you draw your muscles in like you're holding back a little bit of gas. And did you feel how your muscles gave your baby a little hug? And then release that. And do you feel how your muscles unhug your baby? Another way to try this is drawing your muscles in like you're going to put on a tight pair of pants without letting your back move. And then release that. So the back doesn't move, it doesn't uh, tilt, it doesn't round, but the muscle engages and you um, Keep breathing, and a great way at home to do that is by counting out loud. So let's do that again, where you draw your transversus abdominis in, like you're holding back some urine or some gas, or putting on your tight pair of pants, and you're feeling like you're hugging your baby and drawing your baby up toward your spine. And keep that engaged, and you can either stay here using that muscle and strengthening it, or you can lengthen your fingertips away toward the opposite wall, keeping your baby hug going. Good, and release that hand back. And you can release the transversus abdominis if you need to. Drawing it in again, like you're putting on your tight pair of pants. Staying here, just on hands and knees or lengthening the opposite fingertips away. And breathing or counting aloud. So this muscle is really important because it's the deepest layer of our core. You can release that hand down. 
and the fibers attach to the bottom, um, the underneath of the six pack muscles. So it's helpful to support um, that six pack muscle to prevent your abdominal, um, your abdominal from separating too widely. Some separation is normal. Drawing the pelvic floor in, just like you're holding back a little bit of gas or wearing your tight pair of pants, hugging your baby and lengthening the right fingertips forward. You can take them, that hand out to the side, making sure you draw your shoulder blade down toward your waistband. Thinking about the back of the leg, neck being long as well. Bringing it forward and releasing it down. Lengthening the left fingertips, bringing them out, drawing the shoulder blade down, finding the long, the length in the back of the neck. Bring that hand forward and down. All right, next we're gonna just release a little bit of that tension by wagging the tail, kind of bringing your shoulder and your hip close together. Feeling some elongation in the muscles along the spine that sometimes get tight when you're when you're pregnant. They're working hard to carry your baby. So wagging the tail and just releasing any tension that you feel. You can try to coordinate this with your breath by breathing in to center, breathing your shoulder and hip together on the exhale. Breathing in to center, breathing out as you wag the other direction. Breathing in to center, breathing out, and so on. Taking a few more of these with your own breath. Okay, coming to center. Next, you're gonna stretch your right hand to your right shoulder, and you might stay here, or you might lengthen the fingertips up to the sky. Feeling a good opening in the heart, some stretch in the chest, getting some good stretch also in the middle back, the thoracic spine, just gets really tight. And then you're gonna take that hand and you're gonna thread the needle, thread between the arm and the knee, to to lengthen the shoulder blade muscles. You can stay here or bring the head and chest down. Taking a few breaths here. And you're gonna come back to hands and knees. And you're gonna lengthen the left hand to the left shoulder. Opening the chest, drawing the shoulder blade down the back. Sitting here or lengthening the fingertips to the sky. And then threading the needle, drawing that arm through, and then sitting the head and neck down. Depending on how far along you are, you might not have as much real estate to go all the way down, but just do what's comfortable and enjoy that really good um, shoulder blade stretch. All right, so next, just roll the wrist out a little bit. So we spent a few minutes on hands and knees, and I always encourage pregnant uh, patients to be on their hands and knees to exercise. Um, because it's just so healthy for your baby to rotate in the proper position when you're on your hands and knees. Um, and it's a really good way to strengthen your body so that um, being on your hands and knees is an option for you when you're laboring or delivering um, because it's a little bit of a workout. And so when you are thinking about in your pregnancy, you're always thinking about getting yourself really in shape um, and preparing for your big day. Um, and this is a great position to labor in to relieve um, contractions if you feel them in your back um, and it's also a great uh, way to deliver your baby if you choose not to have an epidural um, because the pelvis can open um, in all directions so it's a great choice and it's a great thing to practice while you're pregnant um, 
Next, we're going to get on to our side. So you can get a pillow if you need to to support your head. So we're going to just lay on the side. And one thing that I noticed with pregnant, with pregnant patients is often their um, butting muscles, their glute knee, the side hip muscle in particular, is weak and that leads to pelvic girdle pain and back pain, also knee pain. So we're going to work on strengthening that and we're going to multitask and also work on the transversus abdominis. So on your side, you're gonna straighten your top leg. You can keep the bottom leg bent so you, that you feel stable. And you're first going to kind of find a long line between your heel, your knee, your hip, your shoulder, and your ear. So almost like someone's pulling you and really elongating your body. And then you're gonna contract your transversus abdominis, remembering you can either use your pelvic floor, like you're holding back a little bit of urine, or you can use that tightening a, a pair of pants. So feeling like you're hugging your baby, your baby gets drawn with your muscles toward your spine and you feel that muscle wor working, but you're still breathing nice and deeply. Then you're gonna draw that top leg back and you're gonna lift and lower. So we're gonna do some of these. So we're gonna get some strength in the glute need, the side hip muscle, and we're also getting some good strengthening in the transversus, feeling that baby hugger muscle, remembering that that muscle is really important to stabilize your spine and also to support your six pack muscles, the rectus, the rectus abdominis, which widens in the third trimester of pregnancy. And of course, a widening is normal, but um, if it becomes too wide, then it can be difficult for um, a pregnant person to have good stability in their spine. So this is a great exercise to um, just kind of give your body some support. All right, now we're gonna pause. And then you're gonna draw that foot um, forward. So we're still using the muscles of the spine still very, very long between the heel and the crown of the head. Feeling like you're being traction gently with your muscles. And now you're bringing that foot forward and sweeping it backward. Sweeping it forward and backward. So you can probably feel your gluteus medius, this side hip muscle talking to you a little bit. And that's a good thing. Tells you, tells you that you're strengthening that muscle. Check in with your breath, make sure you're breathing deeply. All right, and then you're gonna draw that leg back again. So now just a little bit past your hip a little bit drawn back past your hip and you're still engaging here and long and strong and you're going to point your toes down and then you're going to point your toes up so really the hip and the leg is moving in the hip socket still hugging your baby toe goes down and up down and up down and up, down and up. Still feeling really long, elongating the back of the neck so that you're not crunching back there. Doing great. And now you're gonna release that leg. You can massage that muscle out if you need to. All right, and now we're gonna just switch sides and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so laying on your side, supporting your head with a pillow or just straightening the top leg or the top arm, bottom arm. And then you're going to straighten the back leg. 
so that you're in one line, one plane. Draw the transversus abdominis in, do your baby hug, like you're stopping a little bit of urine. And then you're gonna just lift the leg. So the leg is just a little bit behind the hip. When the leg is in line or forward of the hip, it's really easy because you use your thigh muscle. As you draw it back, you start to engage your gluteus medius, this muscle. So this muscle is working and that is really um, its big job is to stabilize the pelvis as you're standing on one leg, which is all the time when you climb stairs and when you walk. And I see a lot of times that pregnant patients are weak here and that contributes to pelvic girdle pain and low back pain. Still doing the baby hug, getting your transversus abdominis going. Anytime if you feel tired, you can just pause, take a break, move around and come back to the video. And then you're gonna pause, sweeping the leg forward and back. Still hugging your baby with your muscles. Still feeling that transversus abdominis muscle, engaging, drawing in. So leg sweeps forward and backward, and forward and backward, forward and backward. And then drawing it back, a little bit behind the hip. The toe goes down and the toe goes up. So now we're rotating the entire leg in the socket, working the gluteus medius a little bit isometrically, meaning the gluteus medius isn't moving through its full range, but that's how it, how it really works. So that's where we wanna get it nice and strong. Feeling the hip talking to you probably, and feel free to take a rest and feel free to pause anytime. All right, now you're gonna draw that leg down. Feel free to rub out your hip if you need to. All right, and now we're gonna work on our pelvic floor muscles. So um, it's really great to exercise your pelvic floor muscles when you're pregnant because these muscles um, are really important to kind of support the weight of your baby. So let's do that. So you're gonna squeeze your muscles this time really strongly, feeling the muscles squeeze around the openings like you're holding back urine or gas, but very strong squeeze, like 100% everything you've got. You're also gonna appreciate how your pelvic floor lifts. Okay, and now relax. Let it all melt away, let all the tension let go. And then squeeze your muscles, squeezing around the urethra, the vagina, and the anus, feeling all three openings, really good squeeze and appreciating the lift. The elevator is going up to the 10th floor and this is 100%. So this is different than the other exercises we were doing where it was just gentle. This is strong. Okay, and then relax. Just like if you wanted to build muscle for your bicep, you'd lift something heavy. This is how we lift weights heavy for our pelvic floor. Okay, and again, squeeze your pelvic floor muscles nice and strong, feeling the squeeze around the urethra, vagina, and the anus, and the lift. 100% and then drop your muscles, just letting it all relax. The elevator just comes right back to the first floor and then staying relaxed. It's also important to relax in between each one and not hold tension in these muscles. Like during your day, these muscles work when we cough and sneeze and lift, but they shouldn't be held all the time. And then squeeze your muscles. You can imagine a strong geyser shooting up from your pelvic floor through the crown of your head. It can help some people get a little more umph. And then drop your muscles. Squeeze your muscles again. This time you can imagine how your muscles as they attach to the tailbone kind of draw in and kind of almost flex your tailbone from the inside. 
and then drop your muscles. And then squeeze your elevator up to the 10th floor. Holding that lift and squeeze. Really squeezing around the front muscles, the urethra muscles. And then drop. Great. So those are long holds. So it's 100% effort um, around all three of the openings. And we just did them for about 10 seconds and about 10 times. And you should be trying during your day to do that maybe four different times, um, those endurance holds. All right, next we're gonna work on some quick ones. So with my pace, um, you're gonna squeeze your muscles and relax your muscles. Squeeze, let go. 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 And just relax. So those are quick flicks and it's great to train your muscles um, to, to work quickly too because that's how you need them when you cough and sneeze and lift. Um, and it's just really important that you fully relax in between each one. So practicing that once a day is great. So one set of 10 in a day for the quick ones. All right, I hope you're feeling really great. Um, so you can come up into sitting if you like. Um, I'm a pelvic health physical therapist and I work with pregnant and postpartum moms. Um, so if you have any questions, um, reach out to me via uh, phone or email. Um, and I offer in-home and virtual pelvic floor PT.